Chronic venous insufficiency. Chronic venous insufficiency incidence increases with age and is a major cause of leg ulceration. Impaired venous return causes venous hypertension in the legs. There are several causes of impaired venous return, including venous reflux secondary to impaired valves in either the deep or superficial veins, or both, venous obstruction secondary to DVT, and pump failure of the calf muscle. As a consequence of this venous hypertension, skin changes occur. These skin changes are venous eczema, pigmentation, lipodermatosclerosis and ulceration. The reasons for the development of these skin changes because of this increased venous pressure are not well understood. One theory is that increased pressure causes capillary damage leading to fibrin deposition which impairs oxygenation of the tissues and subsequently tissue ischemia results in ulceration. Additionally, the increased venous pressure causes a back pressure on the capillaries, slowing white cell movement through the capillaries, which then become blocked with white cells, which release inflammatory mediators and cause local tissue damage and ulceration then occurs. Venous insufficiency presents with symptoms such as itchy legs, heavy aching legs, swollen legs and ulceration. Symptoms tend to be worse after prolonged standing and at the end of the day. Patients may describe an improvement in symptoms with sitting with their legs elevated, which separates venous leg pain nicely from ischemic leg pain. On examination, the patient may have typical venous eczema, which is thickened, scaly, dry skin in edematous lower legs. Hemocytorin deposition from the venous stasis gives legs a typical brown colour. Fibrosis causes lipodermatosclerosis, giving patients the classically described inverted champagne bottle appearance to their legs. Varicose veins may also be present on examination and you should carefully examine and make a guess at whether the varicose veins are in a long saphenous or short saphenous distribution. Venous ulcers are typically located in the distal medial calf or gaiter area and tend to be less painful than ischemic ulcers. Leg elevation and bed rest may help reduce venous pressure, improve symptoms and aid healing of venous ulcers. Graduated compression stockings or compression bandaging have the effect of increasing venous pressure more distally and decreasing pressure more proximally in an effort to improve flow in the deep venous system. Varicose veins should be investigated with a duplex scan and those patients with isolated superficial incompetent veins and competent deep veins should have surgical treatment. Venous ulcers, in addition to compression bandaging and elevation, should also be dressed appropriately and regularly and the skin should be treated with topical emollients to prevent further breakdown of the skin and further ulceration occurring. Malignant transformation can occur in long-standing venous ulcers, and if ulcers are failing to heal, they should be biopsied.